Hi viewers and welcome to the channel. Today we're answering a question regarding how you would create text that's beveled to the base. So this would be for such things as sand casting or injection molding where we need that object that's drafted or chamfered right to the base to allow it to be released from a mold or leave an imprint in the red sand for casting. So let's have a look and see how we can do this. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we're in FreeCAD. I'm going to start off in the draft workbench. So starting from here, we've got our plane and we're going to look down on the top. I'm going to create just one piece of text in here, one letter to start with, and then we use multiple letters in one shape. So for this, I'm going to come up to the drafting and come down to shape from text. On the left hand side, we have the X, Y and Z coordinates, the string that we want to actually create and the height and the font. So I'm just going to put a C in here for the time being we can come back and change this in a moment font file I can click on this and we need the true type font so I'm on Linux so I need to come to the root directory I need to come down to users and then share and then down to fonts true type and then select a true type font. So I'm going to go for Deja Vu, Deja Vu Bold. After we've selected that, that comes in up into the fonts and we can select where we want our font. So I'm going to want it in the middle. You can see the X, Y, and Z coordinates have locked in. We can reset that for two of it as 000, which is the point of origin here. Let's hit OK. And our text has been added to the screen. We can change the size of our text down here so I want this 20 millimeters and we can change that to whatever size we want. So now I've got the text on the screen. What I'm going to do is jump over to the part workbench. I'm going to strew this text because I'm going to add a, first of all, a chamfer on here. So let's just strew the text around about five millimeters and hit okay. First of all, we need to select a shape. As you can see, I haven't actually got a shape selected down here. So I'm going to click that shape and hit apply or OK. After you hit apply, don't hit OK again, otherwise it will do it again. And just hit close. We could have actually selected that shape string and then hit strew and do it through that way and then that would automatically get selected. So now we've got our shape. Our text in there, the letter C. Now if I wanted to add a bevel so it was basically drafted right down to the base, if I try to add a chamfer in here by first selecting the extrude and then come up to part chamfer or selecting it from the toolbar, then we need to select the face. I'm going to select rather than the edges, select the face. I'm going to select that face in here. And I'm going to do it via one millimeter length. You can see all the edges have been selected in there. And hit OK. You can see that we've only gone down one millimeter. This may even go into error. We can see we've only just gone down part way. We need to go right down to the base. Double click on that chamfer and do this a bit more, say 1.5. We can see that chamfer has gone further down, but we're starting to lose the front of the face. So what do I need to do with this? Well, first of all, we need a chamfer in there because we're going to use that chamfer face. So I'm going to come down about one millimeter. So I've got my chamfer face. And what I want to do is rather than coming down just to here, I want to come all the way down. I've got two faces now. I've got the bottom and the top face. Now I'm going to use something in the curves workbench to actually do this. We can use other workbenches as well. For instance, we could use the draft workbench 
and use tools in there for distracting out these faces and then lofting them over in the part. But when we have such things as D's and O's, then we have a bit of a problem because it won't take you out the center, depending on the font that you're using. We can still come over to the draft workbench and use a shape binder in here. So coming in and selecting, say, this face, come out to drafting and come into face binder, sorry, not shape binder, face binder. Click on the face binder. That has a face binder in here. So you can see that face there. Come down to the bottom and click this one. And again, come up to drafting face binder. So what we've got is two faces in here that we can loft across. Now for the lofting, we could come over to say the part workbench and loft between these using the part loft and add in both the face binder and the other face binder, create a solid and hit OK. And that creates the shape that we want. And we just need to come in and select both these binders and press the space bar to hide those. So we've got our bevel that we need but a problem happens when we add the text in the draft workbench for something like an R or a D in here. So I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to hit the shape binder and set the height and just add a D. And we're going to place it over here. Select the font. Let's use the same font and hit OK. Again, we need to come over to the part workbench and strew this by some amount. And then click on this face and use the chamfer. And we need to select the face because actually clicking on that face didn't actually do anything. So we need to select the face here, select face, and just click on this face until we get the green line going around. Set the length to one millimeter, that's fine. And hit OK. Now we we'll come over to the draft workbench and select this one. Go up to draft in, face binder, and we've got to do the same on the bottom. Draft in, face binder. Now the chamfer is still available. It's selected here, you can see it's selected on the left hand side here. Just press the space bar to actually hide that. Now we get a problem when we come into the part workbench and try to loft these. So we're going to go for the loft or part loft. And we need to select the right face binder. So two and three. And we'll create a solid and hit OK. And you can see the inside is basically hasn't been removed. So these are the face binders that I'm just pressing the space bar on. And we can close this true, ruled, and no matter what we select from here, it doesn't actually have any effect on this. So what do we do? Well, the good thing is I've just deleted that now and pulled back both these face binders by pressing the space bar. The good thing is that there is a different type of loft over in the Curves Workbench. So if you haven't got the Curves Workbench installed, come up to Tools, Add on Manager, and we can add the Curves Workbench in here. So we just come out down to C. I've already got it installed here, the Curves Workbench, not the Curves Shape, the Curves Workbench. We can add that in there and we'll get a new option in the Curves. And along here, you'll see a number of options and we're looking for the multi-loft, this one here. Loft profiles objects made of multiple faces in parallel. So if I select these now, this one and this one, we can loft those across there. The other good thing is if, let me just delete that multi-loft, just delete that and delete this loft and bring back all the face binders. So we've got these. We can do something else with this. So let me combine these two together. 
so we come over to the part and I'm going to take these two part compound make compound so those two are compound I'm going to take these two as well and make those two a compound so those two part compound make compound then I can take these two and these two come over to the curves workbench and do a multi loft between those and that multi lofts those together because they're a compound that opens up a number of options so for instance instead of doing it for just the text let's get rid of those and those and come back to the draft workbench we can use a full string in there so full length of text still using the shape string here or draft in shape from string the same tools and we'll add say CAD in here and make it 20 and give it a font open that up we reset the point so it's zeroed and hit OK that's added that in there we need to come over to the part workbench still got the grid in on but that's fine so click on shape string and we have strew that by about 5 mil next we do our chamfering which is this one here select faces and then we'll kind of come in and at the moment we can't select anything that's because we haven't selected the extrude so we drop that down select the extrude selected shape now select faces click this face and then the next face and the next one so now we've got those we can come down we've got one millimeter chamfer there and we can hit OK that chamfer all of that one millimeter again we need to extract the faces from here so click one control click the others and first of all we need to be in the draft workbench to do this so make sure that we're in draft workbench and control click these come up to draft in face binder across those you can see we've got a face binder that's appeared there and that's one face binder that's connected all those up single face binder there come back into the chamfer and we're going to do the same on the bottom click the face control click all the others draft in face binder so hide that chamfer we've got two face binders come over to the curse workbench select both of those face binders like so and then use the multi loft and we've lofted through both those face binders using the tree view on the left hand side here so we've got this going all the way through here so there you have it that's how to draft or chamfer to the base of the object using the multi loft in the curves workbench along with the draft face binder and the chamfer to create those two top and bottom faces i hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon.